On the news, federal government asks resident doctors to resume work. Federal Executive Council approves rehabilitation of Wari Kaduna refineries. And PDP Board of Trustees members hold emergency meeting over crisis. Glad to have you join us on News Now on TV 360 Nigeria. I am Mary Kanu. Nigeria's striking doctors have been asked to resume work as most of the issues they have raised are state affairs. The Minister of Health, Osage Hanire, said this in an interview with newsmen in Abuja on Thursday. Hanire, who noted that most issues raised by the doctors on strike are state affairs, explained that the federal government has started addressing five issues it is responsible for. The minister's response comes four days after the National Association of Resident Doctors downed tools in protest to delayed payment of salaries and allowances, amongst other issues. And to discuss this further, I am now joined by the National Publicity and Social Secretary of the National Association of Resident Doctors, Dr. Oludotsun Ushikoya. Thank you for joining us on the news. Now, how do you respond to the statement by the Minister of Health that most issues raised by the resident doctors are state-based affairs and should be addressed by respective state governments? Thank you very much for having me this evening. Well, it, you see, I, I was just laughing. It's, it's somehow, when the Honorable Minister can say that the majority of our demand boils down on state. Yeah, we are right. We have many issues with the state governors, particularly Abia, Imo State, Ekiti State, and Odo State. And the major problem they have is they are owing their salary from four months to 19 months. Abia is 19 months. Uh, Imo State is 10 months, Ekiti is 6 months, Ondo is 4 months. But what if the Honorable Minister is saying that they, they don't have issue with the federal is a lie. We say about our members in federal, they are being holding from 2 months to 7 months salary. You know how can you be holding somebody 7 months salary? They said they are working on it. This part of the issue, we, 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 we decided to embark on strike like 118 days ago. And they reach an agreement with us that within 30 days, everything will be settled. And the core, the root of the problem will be sorted out immediately. As I'm now I'm talking to you, they are, our members are yet to see the alert in their account. It's so somehow, you just ask us to come back. I remember in April 1st, when we embarked on that strike, and then within 10 days, you, you reach an agreement with us that when we... We, are, we find a way, okay, we, we're going to solve this problem through this means or the other. We give up within so, so, so days. We put timeline on all our demands. Unfortunately, after that meeting, the file was put somewhere else. Nobody talked about it again. Now you want us to go come back to work? Why we are still suffering? Why our members are still suffering here and there? You want us to come back to work? To come and do what? To continue to work another three months so that we can go back on strike again? We have gone beyond the usual of negotiation because we have already negotiated. And there is, we have signed an agreement. We call memorandum of action. What we want from them is implementation. Let them start something. They have not done anything so far. And they have not even called us for any meeting. In fact, the National Executive Council meeting we held last week in the Umaya said, we only suspend this strike when our member that has been suffered, that they are suffering currently, receive a lot. When they see their salary, is their right? They are not begging for it. Is their right? I can't be fighting for salary. Assuming we are fighting for something, we just say, okay, we need to think about it. Because they have turned all Nigerian resident doctors to a patient. Because we are human beings, for God's sake. We have other obligations to take care of. We have a lot of things to take care of. Now you are not you are holding us salary. How do you expect us to live? How do you expect us to pay for our children's school fees? We can't go to the market. And tell if you can hear me now, specifically, how much is the federal government owing you, and how many months? Uh, what parts of um, your demands relate to the federal government? 
Yeah, I will tell you. We have five demands. The first one has to do with the salary of our members on giving platform. They are being held from this center from two months to seven months, as I'm talking to you right now. Now, I'm talking as a July. Everybody that work for July, we are entering August now. They are holding them two months to seven months in federal. Now, we're talking of uh, medical residency training fund. It's an obligation from the government to pay us the fund. So that, that's why they call it residency training. It has been budgeted for, yet to be released to each resident. We are already in the second half of the year. This is 2021. And they are still owing some of our member 2020 areas. That's that. There are some house officers that are being hold salary. Like 114 of them still holding salary. One to two months salary. As I know I'm talking to you. That's still federal. It's not even state. You understand? And other things. Now, when we now come to the state, in the state we are talking about, the, we are, there are some states that are owing four months to 19 months salary. And we are telling other state government to do domestication of medical, medical residency training at, in each state so that the residency training can go smoothly and there won't be any issue. We have been patriotic enough to stay in this country to do our best for our fatherland because a lot of people are migrating out. If oh, you want okay, so doctor, what exactly are your demands from the federal government and what will make you call off the strike? Pay all our members' salaries. Pay residency training funds. Pay us our money. Medical residency training fund. It has been budgeted for. Let them pay us our money. Pay all the house officers' outstanding salaries. There are 114 of them. They need to be paid. Then, we have a of bench fee. There are some CNDs that they have abolished bench fee, that they not coin the name from bench fee to teaching uh, training fee. It should be abolished totally. And all oh. those CNDs should be called to order. Okay. All right, Dr. Olu Dotsun Oshikoya, the National Publicity and Social Secretary of the National Association of Resident Doctors. Thank you very much for your contributions. Well, moving on, the federal government has approved contracts for the rehabilitation of Wari and Kaduna refineries at a cost of $1.4 billion. The approval is one of the many decisions reached at the just-concluded Federal Ex Executive Council meeting in Abuja. The rehabilitation is expected to turn around the refineries and set them up to meet national oil demands. Our correspondent Abisola Adebayo has more in this next report. For the past 14 years, Nigeria imports over 90% of oil and gas products, swapping its price export crude for petroleum products that people need in their everyday lives. This has been attributed to the aging and unprofitable refineries in the country, leaving it almost entirely reliant on imports. This situation was a matter of discourse at the Federal Executive Council meeting on Wednesday, after the closed-down meeting, Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Presilva, announced that $1.4 billion has been earmarked for the rehabilitation of Wari and Kaduna refineries. The rehabilitation of Wari and Kaduna refineries um, is going to be in three phases. The completion of the rehabilitation is going to be in three phases. First phase is within 21 months. Phase one will be completed. In 23 months, phase two will be completed. And in 33 months, uh, the full rehabilitation will be completed. Another decision taken by the council was the approval of $11.1 .1 billion to link all Nigeria's coastal cities by rail in six years to enhance economic growth. Lagos, Calabar, Coastal Road. Uh, this particular route is very important because after the Lagos canoe route, this Lagos Calabar coastal route actually will link all the coastal uh, cities in the country. Uh, th th this uh, particular route is very important uh, for, for our coastal economy. In reaction to the viral video of tortured students, Minister of State for Education says the federal government is making deliberate efforts to secure school premises across the country, which has contributed to a decline in cases of kidnapped students. We've made some recommendations and some work is being done 
state commissioners have been empowered to implement some of them, and the states have also taken major steps, either in um, bringing uh, schools that are extremely at risk or those that are most vulnerable because we've done a security audit of almost all the schools, especially those that are not within, uh, those that fall within our, our suspect zones, and then bring them into some sort of conformity with what the Federal Ministry of uh, Education has designed alongside with the security architecture of the country to address those. The meeting which held at the State House in Abuja was presided over by Vice President Yemi Oshibajo. It had in attendance eight ministers as well as the senior special assistant to the President on media and publicity. Abisola at the TV 360, Abuja. The Board of Trustees members of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, is currently holding an emergency meeting at the party headquarters in Abuja. The meeting is as a result of the fallout, recent crisis and defections rocking the leading opposition party. Chairman of the party's Board of Trustees, Senator Wali Jabril, explained that the recent challenges have made it necessary to convene the meeting, adding that it is not a time for the party to engage in infighting. He insists the PDP must put its house in order and prepare for its next Congress that will strengthen the party and position it strategically ahead of the 2023 general election. And the Nigerian Medical Association Lagos State Chapter played host to stakeholders in the medical sector at the opening ceremony of its annual general meeting and scientific conference, which was held in Lagos State. Discussions centered on the medical practice and the law with major focus on the emerging challenges for the Nigerian doctor. TV 360's Simisola Adigun, who was at the event, files in this report. Medical practice is one of the most challenging sectors in Nigeria. With about 2,000 doctors leaving the country annually for greener pastures, the sector is in dire need of swift intervention, especially in extant laws guiding the healthcare system. The opening conference of the annual general meeting by the Nigerian Medical Association in Lagos served as a platform to discuss these issues. If the environment in which you practice is ill-equipped, if the environment in which you practice is under-resourced, if the environment in which you practice does not give you the tools for you to carry out your very esteemed profession as medical experts, then that is the fault of government and that is the fault of oversight. So in that regard, this dispensation clearly recognizes the weakness of the health system in Lagos and across the country. Stakeholders say preferring solutions to challenges such as medical negligence, malpractice and other related matters will guarantee quality in medical service delivery. We need to keep educating ourselves on newer things. What constitutes negligence and what does the law say? You are aware of issues that have to do with other regulatory bodies or other agencies which are also legitimately supposed to do some area, so, uh, entertain some of these things. But we are saying that the Medical and Dental Council is a statutory body who determines first whether there's negligence or not. After which, if somebody is found to be negligent, there are sanctions and there are other redresses that can be sought. There should be an awareness of even the existing law so that everyone will be able to understand. So this is a welcome meeting in the sense that that awareness will be created. So it's only when people know that they will be able to know what is not there. And that's the essence of this. Let the practitioners know more about the guidelines, about the laws guiding the practice, so that you will not err. Because, they, like they say, ignorance of the law is sometimes an excuse. So, this is the kind of program that is going to create that awareness that is needed. There is what is called patient's bill of rights. There is also that of the practitioner. So, by the time the practitioner and the patients know their rights, and then a, a meeting point is reached, we'll be able to know. Um, how to best apply the laws. Government allocation to the healthcare sector in 2020 was a meager 3.89 percent, a sum stakeholders say is a fraction of what is needed to elevate the country's healthcare indices. Simisola Adigun, TV 360 News, Lagos. 
The African Export-Import Bank has collaborated with the Federal Ministry of Health to construct an over 500-bed specialist hospital in Abuja to aid the development of Nigeria's healthcare sector. While inspecting the proposed site of the construction, Permanent Secretary of the Federal Ministry of Health, Abdullahi Masi, disclosed that the facility will focus on treatment of non-communicable diseases to ensure the less privileged get access to standard healthcare services. With the coming of the disease of uh, public health concern, the center will be able to redress all these issues. And uh, of course, uh, COVID is hovering with us here. And with the center of excellence like, of such nature, uh, it, there is a, every uh, hope that uh, disease of uh, international uh, health uh, concern will be covered by, by centers like uh, the one provided by the African Bank. This is a project that is targeted at having over 500 best species, not to mention the other ancillary yeah. services that are provided. In the process of construction, it will provide employment. And as all of us know, one of the immediate fallouts of the COVID-19 pandemic was loss of jobs. Therefore, a project that brings, that creates jobs, we estimated that over 3,000 will indeed impact on recovery from COVID. The focus of the African Medical Center of Excellence is non-communicable diseases like oncology, hematology and cardiology where you know underprivileged generally struggle to find treatment and service offerings on so the african medical center of excellence would specially ensure that the underprivileged are catered for and can also receive services within our facilities Worried by the resurgence of refuse on the streets and highway, the Lagos state government has acquired and rolled out 102 waste compacted trucks and 100 double dino bins to help in waste disposal in the city. With a population of over 20 million, the Nigerian commercial capital generates the largest amount of waste in the country on a daily basis. But this next report has more details. On a daily basis, the state's refuse collectors move round the streets of Lagos, picking up garbage for disposal. Lagos generates over 30,000 tons of solid waste daily. Getting the waste off the streets is often a challenge owing to inadequate compactors and other essential materials needed for the job. The state government has now responded to the challenge by acquiring these compactors and dino bins which are set to heat the streets. I'm excited because all of those nano beams were, pro were, were constructed and fabricated inside Loma Yard in Ijora, all of those dino beams that were seen. I want to use this opportunity to admonish all of us to say that what we're about today is that to whom much is given, much is expected. I want to charge you Loma staff, I want to charge our drivers, all our collectors to double your effort and to see the investment that government has done today as a collateral, as something that you need to take care of, as something that you see, you need to see as your own office. Take care of your office very well. As an industry intervention, we therefore go a long way in addressing the challenges faced by Loma in the management of solid waste in the state. Most importantly, it helps to bring to an end bulk moving operations and waste management intervention program in our waste management budgetary allocation. This is the second time that the state is witnessing such a development in the last 22 years. The Lagos state government has been carrying out massive road repairs across the state in recent times. The man who heads the state's waste management agency says the road repairs would make the job of evacuating waste off the streets easier. I will salute all the PSP here present. You've invested billions, not millions, despite every cost that the state and the executive have faced. And I'm glad to tell Mr. Governor, our uh, PSP has about 920 trucks among them now, compared to 627, 24 when he took over as the governor of Lagos State. And Loma has its own filter as well. Filter as well. But what we have here today is different from what everyone could imagine in Loma. It gave us the opportunity to design this truck. Hello the trucks and dino beans, the governor has also formally launched a mobile application called City Monitor, which would enable monitoring and reporting of environmental infractions, including indiscriminate dumping of refuse to aid waste pollution reduction in Lagos State. Mary Kanu, TV360, Lagos.
We'll take a break here, but still to come, federal government approves construction of power substations in Jigawa and Akwaibom states. Details of that and more after this break. Glad to have you back. Well, here is a reminder of some of our top stories tonight. Nigeria's striking doctors have been asked to resume work as most of the issues they have raised are state affairs. The Minister of Health, Osage Ehani Ray, said this in an interview with newsmen in Abuja on Thursday. Ehani Ray, who noted that most issues raised by the National Association of Resident Doctors are state affairs, explained that the federal government has started addressing five issues it is responsible for. We also told you that the federal government has approved contracts for the rehabilitation of Wari and Kaduna refineries at a cost of $1.4 billion. The approval is one of the many decisions reached at the just concluded Federal Executive Council meeting in Abuja. The rehabilitation is expected to turn around the refineries and set them up to meet national oil demands. Well, in case you miss any of our news bulletin or for more updates, do log on to our website on www.tv369jaria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and Google Plus at tv 369 Nigeria. On Facebook, we at TV360 Online. The World Health Organization is calling for a halt on COVID-19 vaccine boosters until at least the end of September. WHO Chief Tedros Ghebreyesus made a call on Wednesday as the gap between vaccinations in wealthy and poor countries widens. Ghebreyesus said while he understands the concern of all people to protect their citizens, there is a need to make vaccines available for low-income countries. We need an urgent reversal from the majority of vaccines going to high-income countries to the majority going to low-income countries. Accordingly, WHO is calling for a moratorium on boosters until at least the end of September to enable at least 10 percent of the population of every country to be vaccinated. To make that happen, we need everyone's cooperation, especially the handful of countries and companies that control the global supply of vaccines. I understand the concern of all governments to protect their people from the Delta variant. But we cannot and we should not accept countries that have already used most of the global supply of vaccines using even more of it while the world's most vulnerable people remain unprotected. We'll take a break and return with business and international stories. Don't go away. Glad to have you back. Well, Falasha De Ogunri Day is standing by with the latest in business and stock market review. Over to you now, Falasha De. Well, thank you very much, Mary. The Federal Executive Council FEC has approved the construction of a 2x60 MVA and 2x30 MVA power substations in Jigawa and Akwaibom State, respectively. The Minister of Power, Salim Maman, announced this at the end of the FEC meeting in Abuja on Wednesday. According to the minister, the substations are part of projects executed by government to boost electricity transmission and provide better access to Nigerians. 
Secretary, Executive Council has graciously approved two projects from Federal Minister of Power. One is the construction of 2 by 60 MBA 132-33 substation at Gagarawa, Jigawa State, in favor of Mrs. Uh, Power Control and Appliances Limited in the sum of uh, 154,212,396 Naira and 5 Kobo. The second one is the award of the contract for the engineering and procurement and construction of 2 by 30 MVA, 132-33 substation at Ibioni, Ibom, Aqua Ibom State, in favor of Mrs. Jemek West Africa Limited in the sum of uh, 6.2 United States dollars offshore plus 1.8 billion naira onshore. We'll take a breather here and return with a review of the stock market. Do stay with us. CBS overcame the boost today on the floor of the exchange as the equities market closed a negative. All share index depreciated at 0.32% to close at 38,801 basis points. However, market cap still hovers around the 20 trillion naira mark. Now, despite this poor performance, market breadth closed positive as exchange recorded more gainers than losers. Now, speaking of losers, a leading five, uh, 15 other equities on the laggard stable, uh, Dover PLC and Veritas Capital Assurance PLC, with a combined loss of one naira and one cobo. Now, on the flip side, leading 17 gainers to a win are Conoy PLC and Consolidated Hallmark Insurance PLC, with a combined gain of one naira and uh, 90 cobo. For our market activity, we see that over 139 million volume of shares valued at 1.408 billion naira exchange hands in 3,655 deals. Now, let's take a look at what went down on the foreign stocks. Now, equities on the London stocks as FTSE is in the red, trading at a loss of 0.048%. Um, this comes as the Bank of England warned of a potential tightening in the face of rising inflation, sending the pound higher. Meanwhile, stocks on the Dow Jones opened higher today despite disappointing weekly jobless claims data. The U.S. stocks is trading in the greens at 34,965 basis points. Uh, Asian stocks Nikkei is also trading in the greens at 0.52%. And to wrap on the business segment, the news now back to Mary for the rest of the news. Uh, thank you very much for that update uh, for last day. And uh, moving on now, uh, let's take a break and return with more stories. Don't go away. Hello? Yeah, I found your wallet in front of a supermarket. Meet me at Apple Junction. Yes, I'll be waiting for you. Now we find out. <laughs> Two of us. <laughs> thank you very much, officer. You know, it's surprising that men like you still exist in the police force. Yes, so. Oh, yes. This is just a token <laughs> of my appreciation. Oh, no. You don't need to do this. Well, it's time for Entertainment Report on News Now. Celebrity stylist Tony Lawani has melted the hearts of her fans and followers on social media after sharing some adorable videos with them. The videos captured the heavily pregnant fashion stylist and her hubby Shagun Wealth on her Instagram page in which she puts a massive baby bump on display. Sharing one of the video posts, Lawani teasingly called out her hubby and accused him of making her revisit things she thought she was completely over with. Fans and colleagues in the industry flooded the comment section with lovely words for the celebrity. Self-acclaimed boss lady Rihanna is officially a billionaire. The music star who is now worth $1.7 billion joins the billionaire league following the success of her cosmetic company Fenty. According to Forbes, she is now the wealthiest female musician in the world and second only to Oprah Winfrey as the richest female entertainer. Fenty Beauty, which was launched in 2017, is a 50-50 joint venture with French luxury goods conglomerate LVMH. 
And that is all that we have for you on the entertainment segment of News Now. And now in sports, a German sportswear manufacturing giant Puma has terminated its four-year contract with the Athletics Federation of Nigeria, AFN. In the letter detailing its termination of sponsoring and licensing agreement, Puma said the termination of the deal comes amidst an alleged leadership tussle between the Ibrahim Guso-led AFN board and that headed by the Minister for Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Dari. There are also indications that the sportswear company might eventually sue the AFN to court for alleged breach of contract as they have been sending documents from their legal department. Well, joining me now to discuss this further is sports analyst Musa Sanusi. Uh, thank you for joining us on the news, Mr. Mr. Sanusi. Well, this kind of act, how does it portray us in the international community? Now, especially in the sports industry, recall that the AFN had similar issues with Puma that they had to terminate the contracts back then. So thank you for having me. Uh in such situation, in case like this, the, it's showing us that the inappropriateness happening in the sports community in Nigeria uh, is really worse. And if we don't do the necessary things, people, a lot of people will not do business with us. And uh, even with the potential we have, the kind of capabilities we have, and a lot of people we have that are capable of making business deals and making conversions, brands will not come and associate with us. Because in this era of creator economy and a lot of endorsement and businesses going up, uh, people will not do business seriously with us. But I believe uh, this will not stop us from doing business with a lot of people, but rather will give us a freedom to come down home and reshape and uh, redesign the industry. So as a lot of people will love to do business with us, even when in this situation like this, the major problem is the inappropriateness that that were lead by government officials. Even if you could remember the issue that is not it happen, that does not happen in the sport industry, the P and ID is led by a lot of people from the presidency, and uh, this is not uh, given a lot of young Nigerians the privilege to bring in a lot of investors. Yes, that's true. Yes with things happening in, in, in the tech sectors and uh, things happening around other uh, hemispheres will not do good for us. But I believe this will not stop us from doing business with global community, but it will make business very difficult for us. Business analyst Musa Sunusi Ahmed, thank you for your contributions. So thank you very much. Well, that's the size of our bulletin at this time. Thank you for watching. I am Mary Kanu. Bye for now.